The Lego Batman movie was directed by Chris McKay and stars Will Arnett, Michael Cera, and Zach Galifianakis. A movie about Legos might seem like an odd choice for critical analysis, but rest assured, if the word bat and man are in the title, you can bet your ass I'll be there. Now, the last time I tried to discuss a film featuring everybody's favorite asshole clown, my attempt was rudely halted by nobody's favorite asshole ghost. But don't worry, I trapped Goofball in a fart jar this morning, so when I say that nothing could possibly interrupt me, this time I really mean that nothing could possibly interrupt me. Oh, what the fuck is this? Greetings, brain chump. Hope you're not opposed to some clowning around, because I'll be running this circus from now on, and I'll be doing it with a smile. Oh no, it's my arch nemesis, the jokester. That's right, you fucking nerd! I hope you're ready to relinquish control of your pathetic internet show to me! <laughs> what are you after, you degenerate sicko? What else? Your chocolate chunk of Wonker Bunkers, of course! You'll never get my Wonker Bunkers, you vile fiend! I had a feeling you'd say that, which is why I planted a bomb inside your precious burn bot. There's enough C4 packed into your lovely TV waifu to level your entire apartment complex. You have five minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> If you fail to comply, then today's episode is going to be a real blast! <laughs> well, unfortunately, our policy here on Brain Dump is to not negotiate with terrorists. So I guess I'll just have to finish up today's episode before time runs out. I always knew Burnbot had an explosive personality! Yeah, you tell him, Mr. J. Shut your fucking mouth, you whore! Whoa, jokester, why are you so mean to your girlfriend? That's not cool. Our relationship is complicated. Yeah, complicated. We're sex perverts. We have weird sex. Yeah, weird sex. Our sex is so weird it would make your head spin. I like it when he hits me with his big floppy clown shoe. Don't you fucking kink shame us. And before you ask, yes, I do call him daddy. Wasn't gonna ask, but thanks for the information, I guess. You know, Jokester, I gotta say, you kinda remind me of the Joker, a popular Batman villain and one of the most iconic fictional characters of the past 100 years. Everybody loves the Joker, right? And why not? He's a great character. Not because he's particularly intricate or complicated, but just because he's fun to watch. Because he has fun. And when he has fun, we have fun. But if you ask me, the Joker hasn't been much fun lately. Over the years, the Joker has run the gamut from mischievous prankster to tortured brooding chaos agent. Through extensive research and countless hours of scrutinous calculation, I myself have devised an all-encompassing yet concise list of criteria through which all Jokers can be judged. One. The Joker has to make jokes. Two, the Joker has to laugh like an idiot. That's it. They seem like pretty simple guidelines, but for some fucking reason, nobody can get this shit straight anymore. We need to get back to basics with the Joker. Go back to square one. We gotta remind people what it is they liked about the Joker that made him so popular. Reinventing characters, fleshing them out, making them more grounded and human, these things can be entertaining, don't get me wrong. But the Joker ain't the guy to do that with because the entire appeal of this character is his simplicity. Once again, these two things. The problem with the Joker is that people started romanticizing the fact that he's a psychopath. And yeah, sure, that is is a facet of his personality, but lots of villains are psychopaths. So obviously we can assume that the Joker's psychopathic nature isn't the defining characteristic that contributed to his popularity. I wonder what it could have been. You think it could have been these two fucking things? Jeffrey Dahmer is a psychopath. You don't see pictures of his goofy mug on t-shirts at Hot Topic. I don't want the Joker to be a languished commentary on the duality of man. I want him to be a wacky, stupid cartoon asshole with a bomb that looks like a bowling ball. Now Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight was great, we all agree. He was a totally captivating villain who was eccentric, threatening, and intense. But because he wasn't silly enough, in my eyes, he was essentially an entirely new character. Is it too much to ask to want some jokes from a character named the Joker? Let's not blow this out of proportion. All right, so we got one in. 
And because romanticizing the Joker being a psychopath was the driving force behind this reinvention, Jared Leto set out to make the Joker even psychopathier, going so far as to mail his Suicide Squad co-stars dead rats and used condoms. You know, like the Joker always does. Ironically enough, at the end of the day, Leto's Joker wasn't all that functionally different from Ledger's Joker. They just gave him a stupid new outfit, stupid tattoos, and he was portrayed by a decidedly much worse actor. In a decidedly much, much, much worse movie. Honestly, what makes the Joker so compelling is his silliness contrasting with his insanity. If you think of the Joker as a gradient scale, you'll find that you can't really venture too far in any given direction without sacrificing the juxtaposition that makes him so unique. It's gonna take more than a Flavor Flav grill to get us to be afraid of a dude who wears makeup. A dude who wears makeup? What is this guy? One of those newfangled trans Gengars I've heard so much about? So, now that we know how to make the Joker great again, how did Zach Galifianakis' version fare? Well, he's got the laugh down, but he really only does it like once or twice. The Joker's laugh is important. A laugh is like a fingerprint. It can tell you a lot about a person. <laughs> I did like this movie a lot, so I'll give him a pity check here. Ba-ding! But was he jokey enough? Well, he was funny, but that's not really the same thing. And I mean, this is an animated children's film, all the characters are funny. So yeah, I can't really give it to him. Now a stupid cartoon clown who spouts silly puns wouldn't have fit in very well in Christopher Nolan's grounded universe. I understand that. But the Lego Batman movie is already pretty fucking silly, so some patented Joker silliness would have fit in perfectly. But we still didn't get it. This might seem like too staunch of a rule, but here's the kicker. The jokes don't even have to be funny. He just has to think they're funny. Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> also, this is a nitpick, but I wasn't a fan of the fangs. I think they would have been better off going with the Joker's trademark Conrad Veidt-inspired toothy grin. Looks like time's almost up, brain chump. Hope you're ready to rest in pieces, because this episode's about to end with a bang! Well, I already fucking hate my life, so yeah, blow me up, I don't give a shit. Fine, I will! Fine, then do it! Fine, I'm fucking going to! There's no bomb in my TV, is there? No. I couldn't afford one. Things have been tough for the old jokester lately. Well, maybe you should get a real job instead of hanging out in a dusty old warehouse all day. Also, why did you write ha 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 all over your walls? What? I didn't do that. Hey, who wrote on my fucking walls? That's just fucking disrespectful is what that is. You know what, Jokester, you're not so bad. There's no reason you and I have to be enemies. I don't need your fucking pity friendship. You might have won this round, Brain Chump, but next time you won't be so lucky. <laughs> What's so funny? What? What are you laughing at? Well, I'm the Jokester. Yeah, but you didn't say anything funny that time. Oh. Well, excuse me, asshole. Well, Burnbot, it looks like you get to go another day without exploding. That's always a victory in my book. Fuck off, you wicked retarded retard! Today's insult brought to you by the city of Boston.